and good afternoon race fans and welcome here to Dover International Raceway as we get ready for race number 9 of season 7 of the NCRA Oreo Truck Series. We are getting ever so close to this season's Oreo Truck Series All-Star Race. Several drivers have already locked themselves in with wins this season including Jacob Lawler, Zach Campbell, Tanner Sullivan, Levi McIntyre, Kyle Matthews, Haruhi Tashimi, and Jake Cole. But there's still a few spots open here as we still got about four more races till that particular event is going to take place. So we're going to see what driver's going to capitalize on the chance here today at the Monster Mile as we're going to have 40 laps of racing in the Jackson Hewitt to Hundred Here today is going to be actually a pretty good points battle uh, coming into this race. Jacob Lawler is still the points leader by a total of 17 points over a three-way tie for second place. And the ironic thing is all three of those drivers in that tie are starting inside the top ten. Gene Sanford, the current rookie points leader, lines up in third place today. Deanna Shelton lines up eighth on the outside of row four there alongside of Danny Wells. And Cody Lamas will start in tenth place. Those three come in tied with 231 points apiece, tied for second in the standings. That's going to be a pretty good battle here today if all three of those drivers keep themselves up at the front for today's event. Then the driver who would technically be third in points, but he's listed fifth in the standings right now, is Zach Campbell. He's second in rookie points, our winner from Phoenix, and uh, he's a total of 20 points back from the points lead. And then the rest of the top 10 in points are Kyle Corbett, Kyle Thomas, who's actually starting up here in the fourth position, and then also Tanner Sullivan, Matthew Daly, and Chris Dalton has actually made his way up inside the top 10 in points now, a former Truck Series champion in his own right. But the guy on point for today's race is going to be Joshua Michaels in the 43. Now, uh, Michaels has, I do not believe, been to Victory Lane in an Oreo Truck Series event. I believe last year he drove the 7 machine, and I don't think he went to Victory Lane that year, and so he's looking for his first win. And we know here at Dover, at this particular track, unless pit strategy comes into play, track position is key. So good qualifying spot for Michaels. Michaels actually comes in this race 35th in the current points. And then I'm lining up uh, back there in the uh, fifth position is Dylan Poteet. Poteet, another driver who really needs a good run. He's 33rd in the point stands. And alongside of him is Zachary Robinson in the 33. This is going to be his final start in the Oreo Truck Series before he's going to be replaced. So we'll see how he does in uh, his final race in the Oreo Truck Series. Remember, last year, it was Jeffrey Buckeye who made his final Snickers Cup Series start at Champs-Élysées, and what did he do? He won and picked up his second win of the season in that particular series. So we'll see if Robinson may be able to pull off something like that here today. But enough talk. It's time to get these trucks rolling off. They'll complete a couple of pace laps, and while they do that, we will show you the starting lineup for today's event. It's going to be a wild one. There we go, had to turn on the volume there, I forgot that my uh, thing was muted. But anyway, here's a look at your starting lineup for today's event. It looks like the final row's got 9th and 10th in it, Matthew Daly and Chris Dalton. We'll see how they pick their way through the field. exactly known for the roominess of it, but it's known for high speeds and it's known for having to have a car with good stability and traction because this track has just enough banking that if you end up overdriving the corner, you're going to slide up the racetrack and somebody that has made the turn correctly is going to capitalize, cross over under your, uh, down to your inside and take away a position from you. Getting ready for a wild one here. Dover always excited whenever we come here and we're going to see if it's going to be just as exciting here this week. Joshua Michael, Zach Campbell is down. Flagman waves the green, and we're underway here in the Jackson Hewitt 200. Two by two by two, they head into turns one and two. Gene Samper 
Going to follow Joshua Michaels there on the inside line. Looks like the, the William Duncan car got caught on the high side there for a moment, the 21, but now he tucks back in line. And now Samford jumps to the high side. Here comes Dylan Pote for second as Joshua Michaels begins to scamper away. Wow, they're really hairy back here. Back around Jake Cole, William Duncan. There you see the 55, the 21, both rim riding on the high side there. They're three abreast. The points leader, Jacob Lawler's back in this mess. Kyle Corbett's back here, too. And there's Chris Dollerton. We talked about him starting in the final row. He's all of a sudden already worked his way up through the field. Where has he scored this time? 30th place. Man, is he on a mission. He started in 41st. And he's already picked up 11 spots in just three laps. This guy, look out for him. Four wide back there. Trent Dunham. Charles Jackson. We know those two don't like to be around each other. They have in the last couple weeks because again, the Rexon. Chris Washer spins in front of the field. Cody Lamas almost got spun. Did he get spun? No, he saved it. He almost got spun off the nose of Chris Dollerton, but he hangs on to it. Chris Washer had a solo truck spin there. And Joshua Michaels going to lead him down here to the yellow. Danny Wells in second. And here's the thing these guys got to be careful of these leaders. They got to slow up. For these slower machines. Careful, careful, careful. Is everybody cool? Oh no, nope, nope. Silver Fox just got spun. Right in front of Austin the plant, and he's smoking. Oh, come on. That's the one thing about Dover I don't like is these leaders do not know how to slow down when there's an incident in turn one, and somebody just flat out turned. The Turner Motorsports number four machine of James Silverfox, 39th in points, and he was running ninth place. Are you serious? There's LaPlante. He's coming to pit road. I think he got a little damage out of that, too. That's something that just drives me nuts, is that these drivers do not know that they have to slow down when a caution comes out after they cross the star finish line. But Joshua Michaels is the current leader. Then Stanley Wells, Bob Jones, Zachary Robinson, and James McLeod. That's the top five. Let's head back and look at a replay first of what happened to Chris Washer. And then we'll take a look at that incident with James Silverfox after the caution had flown. Well, this was a three-wide situation that all of a sudden turned four-wide. Right there, Haruhi is going to get a good run, get to the inside of Washer. Washer's already in a three-wide situation with Lawler and Campbell and... There's the contact. Chris Washer going to go around off the nose of the NOS Energy Dodge. And Chris Washer, I don't know how hard a hit he's going to take into this inside safer barrier. We're going to have to see here. He's going to back the right rear into it. There you see Cody Lamas and Chris Dalton making contact. I thought those two were going to wreck, but they, they hung on to it. Good job by both of them. Two drivers come in, top 10 in points. And Washer... Aside from backing in the right rear into the safer barrier, does a good job of making sure his number 87 Nesquik machine is not going to be damaged. So he basically got away with that. That was a nice piece of driving there and a nice job of getting on the brakes. Chris Washer comes into this race 20th in the point standing, so this is obviously going to lose him some track position, but he may be able to make it up. Still a good save for the 87 machine. Now let's take a look here. Let's not even bother to go to a separate replay. Let's just jump immediately to James Silverfox. There you see him. There's James McLeod, who has scored fifth right now. McLeod was right behind him. Or not McLeod, Silverfox was right behind him. And who's going to do the turning? I'm almost wondering if it's going to be Austin LaPlante. Right here, they come into turn two. And LaPlante, LaPlante just turns Silverfox in the left rear down into the safer barrier part where it's kind of like a, a apex corner. Oh, and Kyle Corbett in the 17 got a little piece of that too. Rewind it just a little bit here, and we'll show you the spot where Silver Fox hit. You see there, just as they're coming out of the corner, you see there where there's that safer barrier corner? I think that's where Silver Fox is going to hit. Oops. Let me go to a different camera angle here. Yeah, watch right there on the right side of your screen. Right almost into the corner part there. Maybe just a little after it. And right here, you're going to see there. That's where Kyle Corbett gets a piece of it. And Dylan Pote had lost a lot of ground. He started up inside the top ten, and there's Pote way back here. So was Deanna Shelton. Those two lost a lot of ground during that run. Zach Campbell, the same. But the caution flag is out. Let's jump back and uh, take... Oh, no, actually, no, that was from ninth on back. My bad. Okay, so anyway, uh, let's jump back now to live action here. 
and see uh, who's going to be where after they might have made some pit stops this early on. No drivers came down pit road under that caution flag, at least none of the leaders did, so this is the way they'll restart. Joshua Michaels out in front, Danny Wells in second, Bob Jones third, Zachary Roberts in fourth, James McLeod in fifth, Jackie Tang up to sixth, seventh Levi McIntyre, Jamie DeFalo in eighth, ninth is Luis Hernandez, and Kyle Thomas completes top ten. Then it's Alex DeMarco, Dylan Poteet, Kyle Corbett, Zach Rogers, and the points leader Jacob Lawler lines up in fifteenth place. Then you got uh, Leo Walker, Gene Sanford, uh, Dana Shelton, Zach Campbell, and Cody Lamas. That is the top 20. There's Chris Dollerton started 41st up to 21st. He's picked up 20 spots so far since the start of this race. And right behind him, the guy who started 42nd, Matthew Daly, is now up to 22nd. So both he and Dollerton, after starting in the final row, have picked up 20 positions apiece in just the first eight laps. Those two cars are pretty doggone fast, if you ask me. And both those drivers come in ninth and 10th in points, too, so they really needed to get themselves up through the field like they have done so far. Green flag back out. Already a little battle starting back there between Zach Campbell and Deanna Shelton. But they're single file up front at the current moment. One driver has retired from the race, and that was the car we saw smoking after all the incidents. That's James Silverfox. Yet another tough week for that four team out of Turner Scott Motorsports. Whoa, look out! Bob Jones getting unceremoniously moved out of the way, almost into a three-wide situation by Zachary Robinson and James McLeod, as Danny Wells has gotten around for the lead, and he is the new leader of this race. But now here comes Joshua Michaels, immediately back down to the inside, cannot make the move this time as Danny Wells throws the block. Danny Wells comes into this race, as I said, 11th in the point stands. Big opportunity here today for Danny. Would love to race his way into the Oreo Truck Series All-Star Race by winning here today at Dover, but he'd also like to get himself up in the hunt for what could potentially be a chase spot. You never know. Right there, the only, the only uh, Turner Scott car up inside of the top three, that is James McLeod. He's right behind these guys. Oh, one car almost got turned around. Did he get turned? No, he didn't, but I think that might have been Jacob Lawler nearly getting turned. All four wide, four wide. Zach Campbell, Alex DeMarco, I'm going the wrong way. Campbell, DeMarco, Thomas, Levi McIntyre, DeFalo, they were four, almost five wide. How? Tell me how did they keep it together? Right now, though, Campbell to the inside of Dylan Poteet. That is a battle, I believe, for the 13th position. No, that was actually a battle for eighth. And now Levi McIntyre is going to go to the inside. Bob Jones trying to work his way back up to the front here. After he got moved way up to the high side. How about Luis Hernandez? Nice run for the 88. Currently in the seventh position right now. And oh, Dana Shelton just got turned. And I think it might have been Haruhi Tashimi who did the turning again. It was. That's the second time Tashimi has turned a car off of four. This time it's going to be Deanna Shelton and LaPlante slides in. Whoa, LaPlante, what are you doing? Man, he really had to get on the brakes, did LaPlante. And Danny Wells is going to be the leader under our second caution. Now let's make sure these leaders are not going to wreck it up here again under the pace lap. Doesn't look like it this time. Looks like all the drivers that were involved in the incident drove away. But Deanna Shelton comes in tied for second in point stands. This is not what she needed. A little bit of female rivalry, if you will, between herself and Haruhi. And Haruhi, I don't really know what's going on, but that's the second time she has turned a driver. Chris Washer was the first one off of turn four. We'll jump back and look at a replay of what happened, of course, but we're going to be making some pit stops here. So let's take a look and see what kind of strategy there's going to be. Danny Wells, Joshua Michaels, Jace McLeod, Gene Sanford, and Jacob Lawler. That is the top five coming down pit road. No driver is going to roll the dice and stay out. Lawler's going for right side tires. We'll see if it's going to be just a two-tire stop for all these leaders. Sanford now pulls into her pit stall. And now Danny Wells pulls in. I think he was 7th uh, in qualifying. Oh no, I guess he must have been 3rd. Because Joshua Michaels was the pole sitter. And he pulls into his first pit stall there. And let's see. Off of pit road, Danny wins the race off. Does Michaels come out in 2nd though? No, Zach Rogers comes out in 2nd. 
then Danny Wells in third, or not Danny Wells, uh, Joshua Michaels in third, then McLeod, and then a drag race for fifth, Luis Hernandez just barely, barely beating out Gene Samper, then McIntyre, Lawler, Andreas Allen now cracks the top ten, I believe Bob Jones is going to be in tenth place with Jackie Tang right behind. So there's your leader under the caution flag after pit stops. Danny Wells leads the way. Let's jump back look at the replay of what puts under the caution for the second time here today at Dover. And again, Haruhi Tashimi is going to make a move four wide. And again, she's going to turn the car to her outside. This time, second in points, Deanna Shelton. We have received word, though, that Deanna Shelton has been able to continue. So that's at least good news for the 94 team. But there you go. And this time, uh, Deanna Shelton not able to get away with what Chris Washer did. This time, she nosed it into the inside safer barrier. And Tashimi does not get away uh, home free this time. She gets quite a bit of damage, too. I'm sure she's going to get the inside retaining wall as well. And then, wow, nice miss there by our winner from Talladega last week. Uh, Kyle Matthews, Leah Walker very close as well. And then, watch here. Where's Austin? Okay, here comes Austin the plant. He was off the pace after he ended up getting a piece of James Silverfox under our last caution. I think what's going to happen here is he's going to slam on the brakes and nearly lose the thing. Yeah, he sees the wreck, the car, the smoke up ahead. Oh, he hit the apron and it wheel hopped it on him, and then he slides into the uh, kind of sideswipes the 94. That was a quite a good piece of driving by Laplante to make sure that thing didn't snap around on him because that car. Met two different elevation changes and was nearly airborne there, hopping from the apron onto the racetrack and sliding the brakes the whole time. So a nice save there by the 48, but that's what brings out the caution. We're going to have to find out if uh, NSRA is going to take any action against Haruhi Jishimi and uh, what she's been doing here today as far as turning two separate drivers here in the first 15 laps of today's event. Well, the word is from NCRA as far as Haruhi Tashimi is concerned is right now they are not going to take action, but she is under uh, scrutiny, if you will. They basically given her two strikes. If she gets three strikes, she's out. They will disqualify Haruhi Tashimi from today's event. <clears throat> she will not get scored for any points if she does cause another incident like she's done in the first two cautions. So, Haruhi Tashimi on the hot seat, if you will, and we'll have to see if that's going to maybe tone down her trying to make four wide situations and wrecking drivers out of turn four. Danny Wells is the leader after that round of pit stops. Zach Rogers up to second now. Zach Rogers is 14th in the point stands. He's not a driver we've really talked about much this season, but he's a driver to maybe contend with here today. Joshua Michaels lines up third. Fourth is J Jason McLeod. Luis Hernandez is in fifth. And the rest of the top ten are Gene Samfer. Levi McIntyre, Jacob Lawler, Andreas Allen, and Bob Jones. Then you got Jackie Tang, Dylan Young, Dylan Poteet, Matthew Daly, and Alex DeMarco. That is the top 15 with Zach Campbell, Tanner Sullivan, Kyle Corbett, Jimmy Bly now up inside the top 20 with Jamie DeFalu in 20th position. There was another driver back there in 21st that's making his final start of the Oreo Truck Series as well, Jerome Assetti in the 75. He's starting to work his way up towards the front now. We haven't talked about the 75 at all today. This is his final start, and we'll see how he does. As they're single file up at the front, but I don't think that's going to last long. Zach Rogers looking low on Danny Wells. Joshua Michaels looking low on Rogers. Best battle on the racetrack right now is back for about the eighth position. That's where you find uh, Dylan Young and Jacob Lawler, and I can't tell who that other driver is back there. Oh, that's Bob Jones in the 11. Zach Rogers. Peeking out of line, trying to get the high line moving here. And he was able to make it work. Joshua Michaels did not get a run to his inside. So that 15 car apparently can not only run the low line, but it can run the middle groove. He's going to try it again. Oh, Joshua Michaels getting awfully close to the rear quarter panel, left rear of that uh, blue deaf Toyota Tundra. But they keep it clean and green here as Danny Wells continues to enjoy the view out front. Meanwhile, a battle between the Dillons back there. Dan, uh, Dylan Poteet and Dylan Young. And Dylan Young actually going to get bypassed. He gets kicked up to the high side there. Zach Campbell's gotten by. Jimmy Bly. How about the, the three car? Jimmy Bly in that three machine. Having an excellent run here today. Has worked his way up through the field. Is now up inside the top ten, I believe. He's either in the top ten or he's in 11th place. Yeah, he's just outside the top ten in 11th. 
But he may pick up some more spots because Jays McLeod just kick, got kicked up to the high side. So too did Gene Sanford. I'll tell you who's really on the move is this guy, Dylan Poteet. Started back in the top 15 for this restart. Has now worked his way up to what is now the seventh position, but now here comes Zach Campbell and James McLeod to the inside. Now, as soon as he picked up those spots, he's gonna start losing them. And who seems to be able to stop the consistency of this guy? Jacob Lawler. This guy really has been on a mission to keep his finishes consistent, and he has done a tremendous job. Jacob Lawler, a two-time winner already this season. He's running in fifth place. As a matter of fact, his teammate, Bob Jones, who comes into this race 19th in points, having a great run as well. Joe Gibbs Racing has been on a really, really good streak as of late, as it looks like Danny Wells lost the lead and second. Michaels and McIntyre move up to the 1-2 positions now with just about 15 laps to go. You know, we talked about Tanner Sullivan, his win in the Daytona race and 8th in points. Bob Jones has been consistent, he's 19th in points. And Jacob Lawler, of course, the current points leader and two-time winner this season. But the one driver we never really seem to talk about is Prunes Littlejohn. And let's see where she's running right now. She's back in the 33rd position. This has not been an ideal start to the season for that 20 team. I think she just lost a couple more spots there. I think she's back to, yeah, 36th place is now where she's scored. Bruins Littlejohn is 27th in the point stands, really waiting for something to happen, and right now, not having the best of runs, is there some damage on the 23 of Matthew Daly. Now, Daly had worked his way up towards the front with Chris Dalton after the two of them started in the final row, and now he's way back here. I think he's now scored in the 35th position, and he does have damage to the right rear of that machine. I wonder where that came from. Is that on pit road, maybe? Whatever the case, the guy who comes in ninth in points is not good for him. There's Deanna Shelton, 39th place is where she scored. Austin the plant in 40th. And new leader, Levi McIntyre, and the caution flag is out. Caution's going to wave here for the third time today at Dover. After a rather long green flag run. I'm not seeing any smoke. At least not yet. And, oh wait, there's some skid marks there in turns one and two careful coming out of two there guys they're gonna be okay and oh it was Dylan Young Dylan Young in the 84 oh and Zach Rogers oh man Rogers was up there battling inside the top five his pit crew had gotten him out in second after the round of pit stops Dylan Young's gonna pull in his pit stall right behind him oh what a tough tough break for those drivers Dylan Young's retiring Zach Rogers gonna try and see if they can get the damage repaired on that car 14th in points for that driver man what a tough break for Zach cost your flag waves for the third time today let's take a look at a replay of what just happened well let's take a look and see exactly just what happens here Zach Rogers was battling with Tanner Sullivan and I don't think Rogers knew Tanner was underneath him. He just came down into the 18. Tanner could do nothing. And then watch here, Dylan Young, nowhere to go. Zach Campbell gets a piece of it, too. That's a guy who comes in fifth in the point standings, gets spun around there. That was a close call for a lot of drivers there. Look out, Charles Jackson. Oh, good heavens. Man. Oh, look out, look out, look out. Oh, Leo Walker, good heavens. How in the world those guys get by that? Man. But there is that Campbell. Now, it looks like he's basically only got damage to the right side after he got basically sideswiped from the uh, spinning 84 machine. There is Rogers, and there is uh, Deanna Shelton actually making her way through, and there's the Dylan Young machine. Not been the best of seasons for him so far, 26 in points, and if I'm not mistaken, I may be wrong, but I almost think that uh, Dylan Young is a former Truck Series winner of this event, or at least at this track of Dover. Seems like I, I'm, seems like I seem to remember that. I may be wrong, but a tough break there for both Zach Rogers and Dylan Young. Zach Rogers especially, who was trying to work today to get himself inside the top 10 in points, and it doesn't look like it's going to happen here today. As we go back to green flag racing, we are going to have a total of seven laps to go. I believe these drivers can make it the rest of the way on fuel, so it's basically going to be a seven lap dash to the finish. Levi McIntyre, our winner from Thornton, 
and 13th in the current standings. Big opportunity here today to join Jacob Lawler as a two-time winner here in Season 7 as he leads the way. The pole sitter, Joshua Michaels, lines up right behind him in second. Third place is the points leader, Jacob Lawler, looking for his third win of the season. I think that uh, it would be the second fastest time that a driver has had three wins in a season. The fastest, of course, going to James McLeod, who had three straight wins in the Oreo Truck Series last season. That uh, ended up finishing at Thornton, which we have already passed by. Jamie DeFalu, haven't talked about the 78 at all today. What a great run for him in fourth. And Jimmy Bly up there in the fifth position. Dylan Poti to sixth. Danny Wells has slipped back to seventh now with Bob Jones in eighth. Zachary Robinson in his final start is ninth. And Chris Washer, remember him getting spun out there under the first caution? He's up to the tenth position now in that 87 truck. Talk about a comeback. And Bob Jones going to get kicked up to the high side. So, too, is the leader. Levi McIntyre loses the lead just like that. Joshua Michaels, perfectly timed pass. He'll go back to the lead. McIntyre now left to battle with Jimmy Bly and Jacob Lawler for second place as Michaels will try and scamper away. Three wide behind him. Gene Sanford, Kyle Thomas, Bob Jones. Close quarter racing there. As Michaels opens up a little daylight between himself and the rest of the field. I think the caution may be out again. Yes, it is. Now, this could be interesting. We may get a one-lap shootout, or this thing could end under caution. I don't know. But these drivers, again, have to be careful heading into turn one. It was a spin in turn four, and Kyle Thomas just got spun there. Coming to the caution. The 16 just got spun. Seventh in points. And everybody... Oh, last week's winner, Kyle Matthews. That's the reason the caution came out. He's moved himself up to 15th in points, and he's involved. Oh, Dollarton! 10th in points, along with Harrison Lankford. They are wrecked. Zach Rogers wrecked again. Eric Burton's gotten a piece of it. So is Prudence Littlejohn. There's more smoke up ahead. Zach Campbell is involved. Charles Jackson is involved. There's more drivers in trouble. Oh, no, the points leader! Matthew Daly involved as well, but Jacob Lawler got turned around the wrong way. Alex DeMarco is involved. All of a sudden, with less than 10 to go, all hex broken loose. Leia Walker is damaged. There's Charles Jackson, now it's DeMarco. William Duncan's involved. Jerome Assetti's involved. Jackie Tang is damaged. Roger's coming to pit road. There is Kyle Thomas. He's the one I saw get spun around there on the front straightaway. Jake Rogers has hit pit road. Levi McIntyre's got damage. Was he the reason the caution came out? The guy who led us to the green flag to start off what could be the final restart of the day. I don't know. Is, was he involved? I think he was. And Joshua Michaels is the current leader right now. We may get back to a white flag one-lap shootout. I don't know. But we're first going to jump back, take a look at the replay. Of first what the initial caution came out for, and then that incident coming down to the caution flag involving several more drivers, many of them inside the top ten in the points. Well, here it was, and it looks like another four-wide situation coming off of turn number four. However, that time, I, I don't know, that wasn't quite, didn't look quite as intentional as Haruhi Tashimi's turning of, of, just, of Deanna Shelton, but uh, nonetheless, Matthews, our winner from Talladega last week, hard into the wall. DeMarco gets a good chunk of it, too. Both those drivers came in running well in points, 12th in the points for the 13. And 15th in the points for the 62. And he's going to come back up the racetrack. Gets a piece there of Haruhi Tashimi. But uh, looks like they were actually able to all get by without really that much damage. Let's jump now to the 16 of Kyle Thomas. He's the one that I saw get turned around. Coming out of four. Oh, again another four wide situation. This time with Levi McIntyre, Jacob Lawler, and Jamie DeFalu. And this time, unlike the other times, they were already in a four-wide situation. And there they go. McIntyre does get involved in an incident. He kind of wheel hops there. DeFalu gets clipped both by McIntyre and by Thomas. Somehow he keeps it together. How? I'm not exactly sure. Then Lawler's going to come back up the racetrack. He's going to get Jake, uh, Jake Cole. But they apparently do not wreck yet. And then Kyle, let's see, what's going to happen here? Because there was a big pileup. Oh, William Duncan. Some, oh, my goodness, look at the 70 car of Harrison Langford. But wait a minute, we got to jump to the 21 of, okay, we're going to do it this way. We've got to do it manually, of Duncan. Does he get turned by Chris Dollarton or something? Oh, Dollarton actually flips over on his roof. How did this happen? Oh, 
Okay, up ahead, Jacob Lawler's going to come back up on the track. Look down the bottom of your screen. Isaac Canepa and James McLeod going to make some contact there as the 09 comes back up. They're going to squeeze Sean Galligan up into Bob Jones. That kills everyone's momentum right there. Jake Rogers, there's Galligan into the wall. Jake Rogers thinks he's going to run into the back of the blue deuce right there. That's where he gets his damage. Then all these other guys don't slow up. Charles Jackson goes straight into the back of the 70 machine. 70's going to go flying. Trent Dunham gets a piece of this. Matthew Daly's going to come into this. There's a SETI involved. There's Jackie Tang, Chris Dalton, Andreas Allen. Leia Walker does not slow down. She's going to get a piece of it. Zach Campbell runs in the back of Leia Walker. Luis Hernandez runs in the back of Eric Burton. And Prunes Littlejohn's in the back of Charles Jackson. And uh, Kyle Thomas, who had spun out, is able to pretty much avoid all of this. Chris Dalton cars flips over on its roof, then back onto its wheels. Harrison Lankford went airborne for a good moment. And then, if that's not enough, we got to jump up here to the points leader, Jacob Lawler. Something's going to happen with him. He's going to come back up the track. And who is it that's going to get him? Because somebody sideswiped him or something. Comes back up here. Here comes Matthew Daly in the 23. He may be the one right there. Runs straight into the back of the Home Depot Toyota Tundra. His car going to go spin around as Daly smoking heavily. That's a sure sign that he's done for the day. And Lawler then going to get the car righted and try and continue on, but not before William Duncan's going to run straight into the back of the Jerome Setti machine. Boy, this wreck just kept on going and going and going. Started in turn four, worked its way all the way to the exit of turn number two. And a lot of drivers. I saw first, uh, fifth, seventh, ninth, and tenth in points all involved in this one. If you want to go further down, 12th, 13th, and 15th in points were involved as well. So here in the closing stages... Dover all of a sudden showing its play in no favorites. I thought most of the drivers came in running well and points were going to be able to survive today, but the Monster Mile apparently had other ideas and planned to gobble them up. So let's jump back now, see if we're going to have a one-lap shootout to decide this race, or is Joshua Michaels going to win his first Truck Series race of the season under caution? Brace yourselves, people. White flag will be displayed next time around, and the lights are out atop the pace truck. We're going to have a one-lap dash to the finish here, to decide the Jackson Hewitt 200 at Dover International Raceway. And here's the way they line up. Joshua Michaels, the pole sitter, is out in front. Jimmy Bly is in second. Dylan Poteet up to third. Fourth place, Zachary Robinson. And this guy, I can't say enough about this guy. Chris Washer is in the fifth position. Tanner Sullivan in sixth. Danny Wells, seventh. Jamie DeFalo in eighth. Damage Truck and all. Levi McIntyre still runs in ninth. And Kyle Corbett is up in the 10th position. Then you've got Gene Sanford in 11th. 12th is Jake Cole. 13th is Kyle Thomas after he ended up spinning and bringing out that caution flag. Isaac Knepp up to 14th and James McLeod completes the top 15 as we get ready to go back to green flag racing. Several drivers though will not come down and receive this final green flag and they include the following. Alex DeMarco, Luis Hernandez, Harrison Langford, William Duncan, Chris Dalton, Charles Jackson, Matthew Daly, Zach Rogers, Dylan Young and also Cody Lamas has retired from the race along with James Silver Fox. So the green flag ready to come back out. White flag displayed as well. Joshua Michaels, one more lap. Can he hold him off? Jimmy Bly takes a peek to the inside, but Pokti now crosses over to the inside for second on the three machine. Pokti wants to win this thing. And he's going to go to the inside of the three. He'll clear him. Zachary Robinson right behind him. Can Pokti make a move on Joshua Michaels here into three? Michaels, mirror driving as much as windshield driving. Out of turn four for the final time, though. He has cleared the 31, and he will take the checkered flag here today at Dover's. They were three wide at the finish between Danny Wells, Chris Washer, and Jimmy Bly. And I don't know who won out in that, but I do know that Joshua Michaels has won today here at Dover in the Truck Series, and what a tremendous win for him. I believe it's his first career Truck Series victory, and it clinches him a spot in this season's Oreo Truck Series All-Star Race. Wow. Joshua Michaels had to work his way up there to the front as well because he dropped back, I believe as far back as fifth place, and pit stops were not exactly kind to him either, so he really had to get himself back up there to where he started this race, and that was on point but he did it, and he's going to win 
here today at Dover. Take a look at our official finishing results. Dylan Poteet's going to get credit for second. Nice run for him. He's really needed a good run. He gets it here today. Zachary Robinson, nice run his final race here in the 33. He'll get third. Tanner Sullivan comes from out of nowhere to finish in fourth place. Nice run for the guy who comes in eighth in the standings. A lot of drivers in front of him in points had trouble today, so... He may end up doing really well here in the uh, point stands leaving today's event. Then you got Chris Washer. This guy, good grief, he brought out the first caution after he got spun by Haruhi Tashimi. He battles back to finish fifth. Danny Wells was sixth. Seventh was Nick Bolardo. Eighth place, Jamie DeFalu. Levi McIntyre, after getting involved in that last incident, still comes away with a solid ninth place run. This could move him inside the top ten in points. And Jake Cole, nice run for him to finish out the top ten. And I see the lights are on. Atop the pace truck, we must have had the caution come out under that last lap. Don't exactly know who it was for, but we can find out. Oh, it looks like it might have been uh, Zach Campbell, Trent Dunham, and quite... Oh, no! Was it Hari Tashimi? It might have been. She finished 28th, and they didn't actually score her. So, I don't know. Anyhow, let's find out where the points leader finished this race. Jacob Lawler. I look like he's going to have a good finish today. 27th place. Now, here's the thing. we got to find out... Where did, we know Deanna Shelton didn't finish well, she finished in 23rd, and Cody Lamas retired out of the race in 41st. The driver that uh, Jacob Lawler has to be careful of now is Gene Sanford. Let's see, Sanford came into this race 17 points back from Jacob Lawler. She would have had to have finished in 10th or better, and she finished in 11th position, I believe. I'm not certain, but I believe that uh, Jacob Lawler still holds the points lead by one point over Gene Sanford heading into next week's race, which I believe is from Infineon. So the points get even closer heading into next week's race. And man, oh man, Gene Sanford almost capitalized on being able to be the points leader, but not quite. Just barely missed out on the mark of being the points leader of the Oreo Truck Series. But nonetheless, though, folks, this race is over. Congratulations to Joshua Michaels on his win here in the Jackson Hewitt 200 at Dover International Raceway. Hope you guys enjoyed today's race. If you did, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to become part of the crew today. Here comes your official fishy results over on point stands and rookie points heading to next week's race, which I believe is from Infineon. I'll get a uh, confirmation on that, but I do believe that is where we're heading for some good road course racing. We still got a mobile and Snickers Cup Series event coming your way here very soon on the Energy Sports Channel, offline racing at its best.